Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Captain Sean Barbabella, your Master of Ceremonies. Welcome to today's Change of Command Ceremony, where Captain Reginald Yoon will be relieved by Captain Kevin Brown. The Change of Command Ceremony you witnessed today is an example of the rich heritage of naval tradition. The heart of the ceremony is when the commanding officer and relieving officer read their orders and exchange salutes, signifying the transfer of command from one officer to the other. With a hand salute and the words, I relieve you, sir, and the response, I stand relieved, Captain Ewing will pass to Captain Brown all authority, responsibility, and accountability for command of Navy Medicine Readiness and Training Command, Camp Lejeune. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for our national anthem and the invitation. Boots, boots, four side boys. Aye, aye, sir. Tie boys. Attention. Left or right. Face. Straight. Four bells. Captain, Medical Corps, United States Navy, arriving. Strike, four bells. <laughs> Navy Medicine, Readiness and Training Command, Camp Lejeune, arriving. <laughs> Boots, post, six side boys. Aye, aye, sir. Strike, six bells. <laughs> Naval Medical Forces, Atlantic, arriving. Strike, six bells. <laughs> Assistant Director, Healthcare Administration, Defense Health Agency, arriving. Please remain standing for the posting of the colors, the singing of our national anthem, and the invocation. Color guard, parade the colors.
retired the cult. Let us pray. Beneficent and magnificent God, we ask for your grace and favor as this change of command takes place. Allow us to experience the passing of the Gaidon as of earthly as well as heavenly importance. During this exchange, instinctively and spiritually forge into Captain Ewing III and Captain Brown a daily reminder or why they dedicated a season of their lives to the Medical Corps of the United States Navy. Use that commitment so that they may operate out of a spirit of integrity and wisdom. Finally, may Captain Ewing and Brown experience you. Wrap your arms around Captain Ewing and give him the stamina to find a balance between new work responsibility and life with Misa, Jera, and Kendall Likewise, wrap your arms around Captain Brown and give him the stamina to find a balance between new work responsibilities and life with Tiffany, Maggie, and Olivia. Father, may these men grow in favor with you and those they lead and your peace be upon them. Amen. Post the side boys. Aye, aye, sir. Side boys, left or right, face. Post. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Rear Admiral Case, Dr. Lund, distinguished guests, commanding officers, command master teams, sergeant majors, elected officials, ladies and gentlemen, and staff of Naval Medical Center, Camp Virginia. Good morning and welcome to the change of command and change of authority ceremony where Captain Kevin Brown will be relieving Captain Reginald Ewing as commanding officer of the Naval Medical Center and director for the Coastal North Carolina Market. Attending with Captain Brown are his wife, Tiffany, and his daughters, Maddie and Olivia. Attending with Captain Ewing are his wife, Misa, his sons, Jarrett and Kendall, and his father, Reginald Sr. and family. The presiding officer is Rear Admiral Case, Commander, Naval Medical Forces Atlanta. A Medical Ser Service Corps officer, Rear Admiral Case has served in various roles both operationally and ashore. The details of his distinguished career are listed in your program. Please join me in welcoming Admiral Case to the podium. How you doing over there, everybody? Hey, uh, hey <laughs> good morning. Uh, first, uh, probably one of the finest decisions that Dr. Ewing made, and I hope, I'm sure it was you, was to do it inside. So, so thank you, because I've been at a change of here in July outside. Thank you. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant leadership. Uh, 
but thank you very much. Uh, it's an honor to be here today. I do have a few remarks. Um, I think I got it down to 90 minutes, so um, so we'll, we'll, we're going to go from there. But uh, I just want to thank Dr. Lyon. Good to have you back. We're going to do this a couple of times, and uh, we have no greater partner than uh, Dr. Lyon, the team that we work with on the DHA side of the house. So it's an honor to have you where you're supposed to be with the Navy and the Marine Corps. So thanks for that. Uh, Speaking of the Marine Corps, uh, Brigham, it was nice to meet you this morning. Thank you for your support. With your, I saw you over there. Oh, here. Hey, over there. I'm just going to keep moving this thing out. Can I do that? All right, all right. But thank you. Uh, there, are some, uh, there are some people that consider, and you'll be in this, this world soon too, they're hospital forever. Welcome to your hospital, uh, Dr. Hancock. Dr. Timby, I saw you sneak in. Welcome. Good to see you. Uh, we're on the stocks. Uh, we don't do a change of plan without you being here, and I think for Reggie and I, uh, it just says what a great mentor and friend you've been. Enjoy, it's good to see you too. So thank you very much. And there are, I, I saw uh, Sheriff Miller, thank you for coming. Appreciate your support. And I know there's a lot of community leaders here, and uh, this hospital is about our community. Without you, we don't exist, and vice versa. So thank you for coming. There's probably too numerous to mem mention, but but we're part of a great family here, so it's great to be part of it. Um, so, I'm, it's hard for me to start, but I'm gonna start with this. Thank you for your two years here, Reg. Uh, you've done a great job as CEO, and uh, during our transition as a, as a director of, of the hospital for DHA, and welcome, Kevin Brown. Welcome to your, your new assignment, probably the finest you'll have. It's good to be back here at the medical center of the Marine Corps. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty awesome for my wife, Chris, and I to come home. Uh, it seems like yesterday, an ensign case reported here for duty. But they reminded me because they left my bull ensign. Uh, it wasn't lost. It was in the command suite today. So it was a reminder that, that I was here at one point. And it's really great. I had a chance to see a few of you. I hope to see the, some more of you that, that have served this command. You know, I've been 28 years that continue to serve this command. Uh, just amazing. Uh, serving this command in the fighting forces of the Carolina MAGTAP. Now I had to explain to IA what the MAGTAP was, and, uh, but, but it really is, it, it is the power of the Marine Corps to go out and, and do what the Marine Corps needs to do. And again, we're, we're just thrilled to be part of that here. Uh, but it's a true, it's a true homecoming, because this was our home for eight years of our lives through various assignments. But not only because of that, because I'm coming home and I'm joined on the stage by really two members of my Navy. These are my brothers, and um, and uh, we were we were on staff together in 2006 in Annapolis at the Naval Academy, and we became pretty good friends uh, there. We were blessed to be under command of another Camp Lejeune alum, Captain Ross McMahon. That name, some folks may remember that name. Uh, he was one of my first bosses here, and I had a chance to serve him a few times. And Annapolis was the last time. Uh, he's no longer with us, but I know he's smiling from the heavens and saying. How the heck did those three lieutenant commanders get here today? <laughs> I, I think he'd be remarkably proud, and, and I just wanted to tribute him for that because uh, he was a really good leader. But uh, not a, enough about that. This is about uh, this command, and it's about you, you, Reg, and you, Kevin. Uh, but Reg and Kevin didn't get here alone. Uh, Reg's family, Lisa, thank you. It's been you're part of our family, and we appreciate it. You know, Kendall, good to see you. And I'm gonna, I saved the Ensign for last. Ensign, I was one too once. Thanks for coming to be part of uh, I did. I said, I'm pretty sure that's, Reg, I'm pretty sure that's your dad right there. Uh, thanks for coming, sir. Uh, appreciate you and your brother, thank you. And the entire family that drove, uh, thanks for being here today and supporting him. You wouldn't be successful without them. So. Also like to let them, I'm gonna be very formal here. Captain Brown's remarkable wife, Tiffany, and she really is remarkable. There's, there's, um, her, uh, we, okay, I'm gonna go to the next one, the sidebar here. We really married up, the three of us. That's the one thing we have in common. <laughs> we might not look alike, but we married way up. And, and, and so we have that, and, uh, and we all, the three of us really have been blessed to have amazing families. Maddie and Olivia, it's good to see you guys. Thanks for supporting your dad. So over 80 years, um, this command uh, has brought passionate care for our warfighters and beneficiaries. The mission really hasn't changed. 
19, uh, May 1st, 1943. The command's had a few names along the way, uh, and, but today it's, it still stands as the Naval Medical Center Camp Lejeune, expanding the support, as I said, to the community uh, and the warfighter with every one of the changes and, and names the mission didn't end. Uh, Renji did an expert job steering uh, this command over what over what's probably considered the most challenging time in the history of, of uh, supporting Navy medicine. Uh, we, we had to do a little bit of a transition, change how we operate, we established a, a marketplace, we navigated the challenges of, of a global pandemic, uh, didn't skip a beat, uh, and it was pretty impressive. To quote someone that you like, James Humes, read your program, you'll understand that. <laughs> One secret to leadership is that the mind of the leader never turns off. Leaders, when they are sightseers and for spectators, have active, not passion observers. COVID-19 put our backs against the wall in many ways. And your active leadership through all, all of us at Camp Lejeune assisted and helped us fight that war. So thank you. So about that, uh, through 2020 and 2021, the COVID response measures contribute to the success. One of those, uh, you always look for what's the outcome. Uh, I think there was a Commanders in Chief Award here for the, for the, for the base in the area a couple times. Uh, and the excerpt from that award said, Naval Medical Center Camp Lejeune's epidemiology team worked 12 hour shifts, seven days a week to contain and track COVID cases. Your teams measured to, to box the illness, help bring the local case counts to one of the lowest in the North Carolina area. Additionally, your team stood up new laboratory equipment uh, for testing, the acquisition of the Panther uh, for the laboratory department brought increased in-house testing capabilities, uh, actually tripling the daily test count and helping us get our Marines and sailors back to work. In addition, you established vaccine tiger teams that went out, uh, giving vaccines to teams uh, of Marines at units, schoolhouses, and commands, and also helped our civilian community leaders throughout the world. Your teams also, which isn't in here, also supported some of our missions to some of our uh, rabid uh, civilian sites for COVID uh, while we're trying to maintain our, our own staff here. Truly remarkable. Uh, the many years I've known you, you've consistently, wherever you've been, Red, you've consistently made the organization better. The, this command's better because of you. Um, and, and, and you know, there's a lot of people I think at the end of the day would say, I, I'd like to be known for that. You're known for that. Uh, you, and I know as you leave, uh, you continue to do so. So it's kind of neat, they're swapping seats. Uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin's coming here and Reg is going to uh, Fleet Forces. You'll have a real mess to clean up the Fleet Forces. <laughs> you have no idea. You have no idea. When I said my speech was 90 minutes, I told uh, Dr. Brown it's actually an airing, uh, airing of grievances. Uh, <laughs> But no, I know, uh, I know that Fleet Forces is ready for you, uh, and I know that, that Kevin did a great job getting you ready for that. Kevin, this is yours today, and uh, something that I didn't get, so I'm immensely jealous. Uh, one, of the, one of my career milestones would have been to come here uh, to do this, I, but I got another blessing, as you know. I got to go to Jacksonville and be part of that team. Uh, and that was, um, that was a pretty incredible team. For those that don't know, uh, I reported to Jacksonville in uh, April, and two months later, Kevin reported as the XO, and um, we had a lot of fun. Uh, we, we did great work. Um, part, of, part of our admission was similar to what Reg had here. We were a little bit early in the process, uh, but we were the first to set up the market under DHA and, and, and do the construct while also uh, kind of transitioning how we were as Navy medicine. We laid the groundwork for several things, some good, some bad. I think we're, we're, but we're, we're better, the organizations are better because of, of the groundwork that you did up front. You know, and that wasn't enough because that, that pesky virus came around. And then we, we thought we were like, uh, I had a list of what's to do in the last six months when we were both getting ready to leave. And the next thing I know, Kevin's out the door and in a matter of, uh, 48 hours, 400 of our staff and Kevin go out the door for the first deployment of our EMF, really since 2003. And we really didn't know what you were gonna do, we just knew you had to go. And Kevin's leadership uh, with the team um, 
had them be successful, and there was every opportunity to be failure, have failure in that mission, but you were successful in that. And what you did, most importantly, is you laid the groundwork for Navy medicine to, to support the whole government effort and, and support our communities that, that were really needed COVID support uh, for the next two years. You helped to lay the groundwork for the right teams to do that and set up incredible success. So you did a great job there, and then a great job at Fleet Forces. So I can't think of anyone better prepared to come here today. Only two more pages here, so. Um, this team, uh, and again, uh, probably hasn't changed, like I said, since 1943. Uh, this is an incredible team. Uh, experienced, knowledgeable, motivated, dedicated, and I know you've continued to do the great things that Reg did under the NMRTC and the Naval Medical Center and the DHA Market Campus Unit. I wish you and Tiffany and the girls continued success. So the nearly, and I know, see the thing about these change of commands is there's a full clinic schedule going. The, the, we walked by the pharmacy, the pharmacy's absolutely full. So there's a lot of people that are working, doing their job, and that's, but in Navy Trishan, we're supposed to stop lay anchor, celebrate. We don't do that. We just don't do that. So I appreciate all of those that were able to break away. You probably have work to do when you get back. No time off, right? Kevin Brown? No. New seals with them. will be uh, hitting his fist. But, um, but to all of the folks that may be listening online or here today, oh, nearly 3,000 strong active duty civilian and contract per personnel. Um, you continue ex to expand on the 80 years of exceptional service that you've done to support the Navy and Marine Corps. All of you play an in integral success uh, for this organization. Thank you for your dedication to mission. Your efforts have not gone unnoticed and, and are greatly appreciated. So please keep up the great work. Uh, I've said this on every visit and I'll emphasize it again today. Transition uh, brings great opportunities and challenges. Uh, and in the Navy, we have a transition every two years. Um, this is just one of many. Uh, but this command, you'll continue to rise to the occasion, support the new leadership, and let the mission continue and continue to do great things. May God bless these two great leaders. Thank you. Um, again, I wrote nine, nine times, I wrote probably ten, ten more versions of this. Um, but I just, to be, the three of us to be up here is just quite an honor. Dr. Lyon, no disrespect to you, but if you were in Annapolis back then, you were probably at that other service thing doing. The, we don't talk about the other, we'll talk about the other service later. But. Sorry, sorry, man. Sorry, okay. Uh, but thank you, it's an honor. So may God bless these two leaders, their wonderful families. This truly outstanding command. Uh, the Marine, the fighting forces of, of, the, of the Carolina Magpie, our incredible Navy, and this great nation. Thank you. Captain Yu, please take center stage for the presentation of gifts from the Navy Medicine Readiness and Training Command, Camp Lejeune personnel. The Chief's Mess will now present Captain Ewing with a farewell gift. Attention to award. The President of 
the United States takes pleasure in awarding the Legion of Merit Gold Star in lieu of second award to Captain Reginald S. Ewing III, Medical Corps, United States Navy, for service as set forth in the following citation. For exceptional meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service as Commander, Navy Medicine Readiness and Training Command, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, from July 2020 to July 2022. Captain Ewing displayed exceptional leadership and vision while founding community partnerships and business practices, ensuring the successful transition to the Defense Health Agency establishment of the coastal North Carolina market. He developed strategic, operational, and tactical campaigns across multiple geographic commands, identified and consolidated medical requirements, and ensured Navy and Marine Corps forces effectively operated during the coronavirus 2019 pandemic. Additionally, he streamlined the management directives and developed joint quality initiatives, balancing resource allocation with mission needs. Commensurate with the Surgeon General, 2nd Marine Expeditionary Force, and Marine Corps Installation East, Commanding General's requirements. Furthermore, he displayed the development and sustainment of knowledge, skills, and abilities with network recapture and cost avoidance practices as demonstrated by the emergency department caring for over 80,000 patients with 3,200 trauma activations, generating 4.5 million in TRICARE savings. By his dynamic direction, keen judgment, and loyal dedication to duty, Captain Ewing reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, A.S. Apple, Director, Navy Staff. MRTC, Camp Lejeune, and Director of the Coastal North Carolina Army, Captain Reginald Oh my goodness. I get up here, you take your, your cheaters off, Tony, and I put my cheaters on? <laughs> well, this is, what a, what a turnout. My goodness, thank you, thank you very much for everyone taking time out of their exceptionally busy days um, to come down and, and celebrate with Dr. Wine, uh, Admiral Case, uh, Kevin and myself and our families. Thank you Dr. Wine, for Admiral Case and Kristen for being here today to celebrate a new era of healthcare and military medicine for Eastern North Carolina. Welcome Rear Admiral Stocks and Joyce, Rear Admiral Hancock, Brigadier General Neville and Joanne, thank you for being here. Mrs. Journey, Captain Adriano, thank you very, very much. The Office of Senator Tillis, Senator Burr, Congressman Murphy, Onslow County Commissioners and Sheriff's Offices, distinguished guests, family, and friends, you honor us with your presence today, both in person and virtually. Thank you to our ceremony coordinators, all ceremony participants, and to Lieutenant Edgerton for that wonderful rendition of our national anthem. You're all at the top of your game. How about one more round of applause for that national anthem? <laughs> A very special thanks to Rear Admiral Vi for his steadfast confidence and trust in Naval Medical Center Camp Lejeune and for providing me the opportunity to be part of this exceptional team. Dr. Line, my sincere appreciation for your unwavering support for Naval Medical Center Camp Lejeune, Naval Health Clinic Cherry Point, and Naval Dental Center Camp Lejeune. Collectively, the coastal North Carolina market, which you helped uh, us develop and uh, bring to IOC, and we could not have done it without your assistance. We are a unified power committed to great outcomes, a ready medical force, and satisfied patients and staff. Our job was and always will be to care for our warfighters, our retirees, and our families. 
I am honored to have been the 36th commanding officer of Naval Medical Center Camp Lejeune and the inaugural director of the Coastal North Carolina Market. Our team is humble, so please allow me to share just a few of their remarkable accomplishments over the last two short years. Naval Medical Center Camp Lejeune's Expeditionary Medical Facility, EMF Kilo, achieved the highest ever readiness scores across 11 active duty and reserve EMFs in all of Navy medicine. We achieved recertification as a level three trauma center by the American College of Surgeons and the state of North Carolina, representing the first and only Navy military treatment facility to receive this designation. We completed an astounding 3,200 trauma activations, averaging 133 traumas per month. With all hands on deck, our preventive medicine team took the lead in monitoring over 210,000 personnel exposed to COVID-19, and as a market, administered over 157,000 COVID-19 vaccinations. If you were to ask any of the staff about these noteworthy statistics, they would respond, Skipper, easy day, that's just what we do. These are but a small example of this agile and talented team. Kevin, despite what the rear admin said about you, you are, you are a compassionate leader with a track record of laudable performances. You will feel right at home here in Eastern North Carolina, my friend. Tiffany, Maddie, Olivia, thank you for supporting Kevin during these unique and very demanding times. I'm sure you will find no better tour than this. I'm fortunate to have my father in attendance with us for this occasion. Dad, thank you for your unconditional love to support of me, Misa, and the boys. To my beautiful wife, Misa, and our wonderful sons, Jared and Kendall. Thank you so much for your love, support, and patience. This is our 11th duty station, 5th for Jera, I'm sorry, 6th for Jera, 5th for Kendall. We've lived in over 16 different homes across three continents over the last 24 years. If that's not love, I don't know what is. <laughs> Jera and Kendall, I'm exceptionally proud of the young men that you've become. Ensign Jera Ewing is stationed on board USS Decatur, VDG 73, home ported in San Diego, California. Thank you for your service, son. Kendall is a rising junior and student athlete swimming at UNC Chapel Hill. Yeah. Go Heels! <laughs> to Naval Medical Center Camp Lejeune, thank you for your resilience and your relentless pursuit of excellence. You are kind and compassionate. You foster an environment of inclusion and diversity, emboldened leadership and personal and professional development. You've listened to and learned from one another. I know you will continue to provide exceptional quality care to our warriors and our loved ones, placing respect and dignity at the forefront of what you do each and every day. This has been my most rewarding tour in my 25 years of naval service, and I am honored to have been your commanding officer. Thank you. Captain Russell S. Ewing III, Medical Corps, United States Navy. When directed by reporting senior in July of 2022, you stand relieved as commanding officer of Navy Medicine Readiness and Training Command, Camp Lejeune. Report not later than August 2022 as Fleet Surgeon, U.S. Fleet Forces Command. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Kevin Brown, Medical Corps, United States Navy. I will now read my orders. You purge. Bupers Order 0252, official change duty orders for Captain Kevin Brown, Medical Corps, United States Navy. When directed by reporting senior detached in June 2022 as Fleet Surgeon, U.S. Fleet Forces Command, report no later than July 2022 to Navy Medicine Readiness Training Command, Camp Lejeune, for duty and as commanding officer.
Captain Brown's wife, Tiffany, will place the command pin on his uniform, symbolizing his designation as commander. I, and I'm starting to think maybe I have too much life insurance for this one. <laughs>
to this coastal North Carolina market. You are why we're here today. The accomplishments that are being done and we talk about that I'm going to talk about are because of the work that you do every single day. And Admiral Kay said it, even though we're here, that hospital's full, open for duty, parking lot's full, patients are being seen, and I can't thank you enough for what you do. In the past two years, look at what's happened here. COVID, DHA market establishment, more COVID. Afghanistan support and support to Operation Allied Welcomes, more COVID. Lily pad support, defense support to civil authority support, North Carolina support, more COVID, and now deployments to the middle, uh, sorry, to Eastern Europe, and the list goes on. Under Captain Ewing's leadership, he guided this coastal North Carolina market through the certification process, obtained initial operating capability, and is leading the Defense Health Agency on the transition to full operational capability. This market, as was already discussed, is the only level two market getting, uh, sorry, the only market getting level two trauma certification across the entire Defense Health Agency. That commitment to not only Nangle Medical Center Camp Lejeune, but to the entire Central Carolina area uh, to support trauma patients, military and civilian, um, in this area is a, is a vastly needed uh, uh, capability that, uh, that Reg, I can't thank you enough for, for grabbing the bull by the horns on that. Uh, the market also leads in just about every metric that we measure, both inpatient and outpatient care in the military treatment facilities, primary care, internal medicine, physical medicine, infectious disease, neurology, women's health, allergy, chiropractic, dental, the list goes on. This market has absolutely led the way. Captain Ewing, Captain Adriano, thank you both for your leadership and what you're doing. Um, also excelling in, in women's health, um, a clear priority and initiative for this market. Not only their market leader for retaining inpatient and outpatient women's health services, they lead all of the markets in bringing back OB care back into the, from the network into the military treatment facilities. We recognize that the health and readiness of the U.S. service women is health and readiness of the force. The efforts displayed here in the coastal North Carolina market, Carolina market are leading change across the entire uh, defense health agency and military health care system. This market is also a major force generation platform, hosting two graduate medical education programs in family medicine and OB, and soon to host another one, uh, another fellowship uh, in, uh, in uh, sports medicine, uh, and hopefully uh, before the year is out in psychiatry as well. And, and also, uh, the PA program graduated the first eight physician's assistants in the Navy uh, that are now amongst the fleet. Uh, Captain Ewing and this coastal North Carolina market helped drive, uh, as was articulated, the, the local community, statewide, and our national response to COVID. Leading in vaccination measures to reduce the risk of transmission and increase the compliance of vaccine distribution and then increase the availability and access to the vaccine. As was stated, over 150,000 vaccines were given out by this market, more than 59,000 patient encounters. Multiple changes to healthcare operations were done so that care could continue to be provided in this platform despite all the COVID impacts that was going on in the community. And I recognize that none of this could have happened without the relationships that Captain Ewing and his team have made across the market, across the services, with our veterans affairs organizations, and with our community partners. They have developed sound partnerships, teams who work together to ensure we are providing the best quality medical care to our service members and their families. Thank you, Captain Ewing, for all your leadership and guidance. As I walk through his hospital, you can tell that he's respected, but more importantly, he's loved. As a leader, as a friend, and, and so Reg, they're gonna miss you, um, and I'm gonna miss you as well, but my door is always open. Um, as we say goodbye to one good leader, we welcome another. Captain Kevin Brown is a, absolutely the right person for this job. Most recently, he directly supported hundreds of Americans during their time of need during the COVID-19 pandemic. He's deployed to Texas, Louisiana, New York, and Connecticut as the commanding officer of EMF Mike in 2020. And he comes to us from US Fleet Forces Command as the fleet surgeon. We know he's ready to continue to advance the coastal North Carolina market to serve our beneficiaries. Welcome, Captain Brown and your family. Welcome to the DHA team. I'm going to close with this. 
There is no higher calling than to be a military medical professional. Forever where there is a deployed soldier, sailor, airman, or marine, there's a medic there in support. You routinely leave the comforts of your offices and families at a moment's notice to deliver care worldwide. While medical professionals across the nation do some of what you do daily, no one else bears the same burden or responsibility to answer the call. That's why you're special. That's the only reason that we exist. And DHA is in support. Thank you very much. It is customary during a transfer of authority for the senior enlisted member of the command to pass the guideline to the commander. Today, Command Master Chief McDermott will pass the DHA flag, our guideline, to Captain Ewing, Director, Coastal North Carolina Market. Captain Ewing will pass the guideline to Dr. Lyon symbolizing his relinquishment of authority of the coastal North Carolina market. Dr. Lund acknowledges Captain Ewing's relinquishment of authority by taking the guideline. Dr. Lund passes the guideline to Captain Brown, charging him with the responsibility as the director of the coastal North Carolina market. singing and dancing dogs, Olivia Brown, <laughs> or injecting unsolicited overriding objections and commentary, usually all of the Brown ladies all at the same time. <laughs> so, you know, my instincts are kind of telling me to, to drag the comments out as long as I, I can today, because, you know, I'm not sure when these favorable conditions will be present again. So, <laughs> But um, I, I do also recognize, here's the dilemma, you know, I recognize uh, that, uh, you know, I'm also the sole obstacle between free food um, and what may be an early start to the weekend and travel for many of you. So, you know, um, somewhat hesitantly, uh, you know, I'm going to pass on my rare opportunity to sustain my kingdom of silence 
uh, and, and I'll keep my comments brief this morning. I'm going to start with just some quick thanks. You know, Dr. Lyon, Admiral Case, you know, thank you for your confidence and your trust. Um, it means a lot. I don't take it lightly. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to rolling my sleeves and getting to work with you both, uh, our important work, that is. Uh, Reggie, Misa, Kendall, Jera, um, you guys, uh, you know how we feel about you. You know, you all are an exceptional Navy family, and you're dear friends of ours. You know, and really when you look at the opportunity that we have, uh, our family's only regret is that this assignment, you know, we're not getting stationed with you together uh, for, for another tour. You know, Reg, some of my most valued days in the Navy are when we suffered the, the regular uh, daily crisis through our joining offices at Portsmouth during our director tours. And, you know, all, all I can say is maybe next tour, brother, you know, we'll look for that opportunity to work together again. And I know our families would, would very much appreciate that. Uh, uh, just, you know, at the risk of, of uh, lists and, and thanking people, I'm, I'm going to be brief, but I do want to mention a couple of my mentors. Um, you know, Admiral Hancock is in the room. Um, you know, Sir Reggie and I, neither one of us would be up on the stage today without your influence and your guidance. Um, you know, we are for, forever indebted to you for that, and, and thank you. Um, Admiral Case, uh, as, as the Admiral said, you know, we, we've been, we go back quite a bit. I think this is our fourth tour together. Um, you know, and my paranoia was kind of starting to kick in a little bit. I'm not sure if that's been by chance or if it was some design to make sure that, you know, I had constant adult supervision. But, but either way, it's worked out pretty well. You know, thinking back, and you mentioned it, sir, on our days in Annapolis, you know, I suspected our leaders um, at the time would be surprised to learn that you, Reggie, and I uh, are in the same room in matching formal uniforms uh, at the same time. And it's actually for a favorable event and not some sort of investigation. <laughs> Yeah, so, so thank you for everything you've done for Tiffany. Really looking forward to round four. And as you said in Jacksonville frequently, you know, strap in, it should be a heck of a ride. Uh, the number of folks who are unable to make it today, I'm going to mention quickly, I hope they're on the line. Uh, Admiral Wagner, Admiral Vi, Admiral Swap, I, I'm forever thankful uh, for your support. And I've learned so much from each of you. And, and really, you know, when we were putting our thoughts together, uh, I consider today really be a celebration of, of uh, your investments in me. Uh, and again, I don't take that lightly. To my family, who've made so many sacrifices in the last 25 years, uh, mad lib, I don't know where the time went, but I sure have grown up to be beautiful young women. Your future is bright, your mom and I are very proud of you, and I want you to keep singing and dancing. Particularly when mom is hot and busy. <laughs> Tip, I would not want to be on this journey with anyone else but you. I cherish as many hours, walking dogs, and all types of weather. As we, we talked through the decisions that got us to this point, I love you. And let's hurry up and get those household goods on the truck and get you down here. <laughs> so my final comments this morning are for the Naval Medical Center, Camp Lejeune staff, and the collective Coastal North Carolina market team. Tiff and I are extremely excited to be joining your family. The warmth of your reception in the very few days that I've been on board uh, really substantiates, in my mind, your, your uh, exceptional reputation. As far as our uptime, uh, upcoming time together, I would offer just a few comments and thoughts with you this morning. So, regardless of your specific job, whether or not you are clinical, uh, whether or not you are not clinical, no matter if you're uh, on active duty, a civilian, or a contractor, uh, you are part of an exclusive team, and, and Dr. Lyon spoke to that. You have volunteered to work for an organization that has the privilege of defending the freedoms and security that our country enjoys every day. But with that privilege comes tremendous responsibility. We must honor a rich Navy and Marine Corps history, and we must do that while we defend our country against a rapidly growing threat. A threat that is driving unprecedented needs to redistribute and optimize our limited defense resources. More than any other time since World War II, our national security is actually coming into question. And the military health system must ensure that our operational forces that we support and the medical forces that we train are ready to fight and win in an opposed maritime environment right now. It's a tremendous obligation, and, and we will bear it too. 
as a matter matter of national security, we must also ensure that our resources are applied for the optimum return on investment in terms of both healthcare delivery and also for operational readiness. Preparing for this fight is presenting many challenges, and you know them, they're, they're no secret. Manning, fiscal limitations, among others, and, and there are many. Understandably, one could easily become overwhelmed by these challenges as they introduce new stressors and they disrupt the comforts of the status quo. I contend that these challenges offer an opportunity to demonstrate Navy medicine's value, much like we've done throughout the COVID pandemic, and we've heard about that this morning already. The Navy and Marine Corps is, after all, an expeditionary fighting force. We operate, and indeed thrive, in an uncertain battle space. We embrace it and excel through innovation, determination, and an alignment of effort. It's what makes us special, in fact. It makes us different, even, from some of our sister services. We are the first called upon to run towards the loud noise when the details of the plan are unknown, and that makes us special. We overcome adversity, and we set the conditions for success. We don't wait for others to set those conditions for us. In this spirit together, we will deliver what is needed to meet military health care and operational mission requirements in spite of many challenges that we face. And we will actually do it while we're leading the path for others to follow. I can think of no better place and a no more qualified team than here at the Coastal North Carolina Market. Your expertise in healthcare delivery is well demonstrated. Your commitment to our beneficiaries and the operational mission is unmatched. And you find yourself uniquely positioned in a location uh, with unlimited potential as a training, uh, readiness training platform. And in summary, I wouldn't really want to be any other place than where I am right now on the stage before you. I cannot wait to roll up my sleeves and get to our very important work uh, together with all of you. Thank you. Bless you and keep you, Captain Ewing III. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, Captain Brown. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, Misa, Tiffany, Jera, Kendall, Maddie, Olivia, and to all under the sound of my voice. Amen. Post six side boys. Aye, aye, sir. Side boys. R ten two. Left or right face. Post. Strike six bells. <laughs> Assistant Director, Healthcare Administration, Defense Health Agency, Department.
Straight, six bells. Naples, medical forces, Atlantic, departing. Boatsy, post, four cycles. Aye, aye, sir. Straight, four bells. Navy Medicine, Readiness and Training Command, Camp Lejeune, departing. Strike, four bells. Captain, Medical Corps, United States Navy, departing. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. On behalf of the Commander of Navy Medicine Readiness and Training Command, Camp Lejeune, thank you for attending. Captain Ewing and Captain Brown would like you to join them for reception in the locker. Have a fun evening.